In this video, I'm going to show you how to open up the transmit on this ICOM 7600 right here. I'm also going to talk about which components to remove if you want to open up the receive as well. This is Rudy from Take a Bath Productions with another video showing you how to fix various things. If you're a subscribed member to my community, then welcome back. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below and please like this video if it was helpful for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the bottom of the radio. I've already taken off both covers and the handle and all that so that I can get to all this. Um, what we need to do is take off the front panel, which is a pretty easy job. Uh, you're going to need to take off these cables right here just very carefully. Kind of lift up on one side and just carefully. Don't pull too hard. And we need to take off these ribbon cables here. Just kind of grab and just be very careful and slow about it so that you don't break anything. Very carefully. Just like that, and that's it. All right, so to get this front panel off, you're gonna to wanna to take off these four screws on either side here. Just a Phillips screw. And the panel should just pull right off, just like so. Now you can get rid of the radio so we can work on the front panel. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove this plate right here. It's just five Phillips screws. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the camera zoomed out so that you can see the whole thing to kind of give you an idea where we're working at. Uh, here is our VFO knob right here, and we're working right here in this area, right here. Okay, so here's a close-up on the bank of diodes that we're working with here. You're going to want to remove for full transmit D59. It's already gone, as you can see. D58 is still there, D57 is still there, and D56 is already gone. So the only ones I need to remove are these two guys right here, uh, 58 and 57, okay? Now for full receive, there's a little bit of a different story there. You're going to want to remove D54, that's this one here, D51 needs to stay in place. D53 needs to go. D52 needs to go. This one's already gone. And D55. So skip one. And here's D55. Now you do this at your own risk. That includes the rest of this whole mod. Um, I'm not going to test the RX part of this, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. But those are the ones that you would take out to uh, open it up for full receive. Now you can remove these with a soldering iron, uh, but I like to use this SMD rework station right here that I've got, this 898D. It's on Amazon. It's fairly cheap, sorta. I think it's about 70 bucks. Um, you can do it with a soldering iron if you want to, but you do uh, pose more of a risk of damaging the board with a soldering iron. All right, so I'm going to turn this thing on and give it a minute to warm up, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to try to give you a brief explanation here of what I do. I kind of like to hold the, uh, the hot air on there for a few seconds, and then I'll put a little bit of pressure on there and then kind of slide that guy out of the way. Um, I apologize if I get in the way of the camera, uh, but I do have to see what I'm doing here so I don't mess up the radio. But that's all I'm doing. I'm getting it hot, and then I slide it out of the way. Um, you can use tweezers for this, but it seems to me like the tweezers act as a heat sink, so it'll take a little longer to heat that puppy up uh, using the tweezers. That's why I like to use this um, pointer right here, and it gets it out of the way faster. Okay, here we go. Got them both out of the way in one shot.
Now, what you could do on this, if you wanted to keep the uh, the diodes in the right area, is uh, solder back one side on here and just leave the other side up in the air. Uh, that way, it's easy to put back. You don't have to uh, worry about losing the part. Okay, so I got all my parts out of here that I want to remove. You're going to want to go back and look for any solder bridges. As you can see, this is nice and clean here. But any solder bridges would be bad news. I'm going to go ahead and put this radio back together just the same way I took it apart. Being very careful with those ribbon cables. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to test this thing and see if this worked. Okay, so we're just going to do a really quick test here. I do have the radio into a dummy load right now, so we are not going out over the air. As you can see here, we've tuned in our frequency for 60 meters, our channel 1 frequency. At least I think that's channel 1. Uh, we key it up. We have 50 watts there. And if we crank it up, uh, we this PAL star meter is not exactly accurate. Uh, we, do sh we should have close to 100 watts right there, so no problem. Um, we're not having any receive right now because we're in the dummy load. So let's switch up to another band. Okay, so obviously this is a no-no frequency right here. Um, it is transmitting right here, so you can see uh, the uh, mod did work. Okay, tuning down to the lowest part of the band here where I can transmit. It transmits at 1.6 is the lowest frequency I can get to. So let's go ahead and see what the highest part is. And it looks like on our upper end we are 54 megahertz. I'm going to go ahead and scan around and make sure it goes everywhere between 1.6 and 54. So let's see that. It also does not transmit between 30 and 50 megahertz. We are right here at 40 and it won't see this, the thing won't, it won't turn red. Come down to 30. And it cuts off at 29.99.99. And it is, does transmit there. And it seems like it's going everywhere in between. Nope. Oh, no, it is. So it covers the, uh, the whole HF band from uh, 1.6 to 30. And then it skips from 30 to 50, goes from 50 to 54, and that's as high as it'll go. All right, so that's the results of the uh, Mars mod. It is working well. I didn't notice any um, ill uh, effects of the mod. So thanks for watching.